Please join me in the opening prayer. God, you are the vine grower. It is your heart that first chases us to respond to your word, Jesus Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit. Lead us and guide us, O Lord. Teach us to listen to you and to respond to you in your holy grace. May we be ever connected to you and one another. Would we reach beyond ourselves in prayer today for your love and your people? Help us to fix our eyes on you and all we say and do. In Jesus' holy and precious name, we pray. Amen. I'm going to need you guys for a little um, demonstration. That's the word I'm looking for. And, uh, God works in amazing ways because the first sermon, the visual I have was great for kids, but the actual idea of the sermon is more for adults. So this will be awesome. I am going to talk about fruit and where fruit comes from and how that kind of relates to our life. So I got this from Gary's. Does Gary just make apples? No. Where does the apple come from? Trees. Yep, trees. So the, the, what comes, like specifically, what do I pick it off of? An apple tree. And the, what part? The branch. Yeah, the branches. So the branches coming out of the tree. And I would really, I really wanted to just have my own apple tree in my backyard. So I sent Joe out to find somebody that had an apple tree in their yard. And I asked him to bring me a branch. Because if I can just stick that branch in the backyard, I am pretty sure I do not have to go to Gary's and buy apples all the time. And then, is this going to work? <laughs> Why not? Because you have to have seeds to plant the tree. It, it needs, I need to actually start at the very beginning, don't I? And have the tree. So Joseph, this, this time I'm actually going to have you be my tree, and I'm going to have you hold this branch out. And Alex, I'm going to have you go up and hold the apple up like it is on that branch. So... The idea is that we are the branch. The fruit is our gift that we, that God has given us to give to others. And we are each a branch, which is just a really cool visual to me to have these giant trees. God is our root and our trunk. And we are all a branch. And then we have all these gifts that can form. But if you hand me that, Joe, if I take this away from God, if I break apart and I try and stand alone, I will just be a branch. And my gifts are not going to grow. So it's incredibly important that I stay attached so I can do the amazing things that God wants me to do. Pray with you guys. Heavenly Father, thank you for bringing us here today. And help us remember that we do need to stay connected to you in order to give the gifts that you have placed inside of us. In your name we pray. Amen. Today's scripture is John chapter 15, verses 4 through 11. Abide in me as I abide in you, just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abide in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. 
If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things so, to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is the word of God for the people of God and all God's people say, Amen. Amen. So I'm not sure if you heard it, but the scripture said, abide in me, remain in me. This is Jesus speaking. Jesus says, Stay with me, and that is sweet, sweet fellowship. So these last couple of weeks, we've been talking about the things that feed our soul. And I don't know if you realize it or not, but we were all created with a hole inside of us, a hole that needs to be filled, and it can only be filled by God. So we're all in this world seeking, searching, trying to figure out how on earth to fill this hole. And we all do it in different ways. But I've been sharing some in different ways that we do it as Christians, that we do it and allow God to come in as part of us. So a couple weeks ago, we talked about worship, the importance of praising God in community, the importance of being together, that fellowship. And last week, we talked about devotion, time in the Word, and how it's the Word of God that fills us and feeds our soul. And so today we're talking about prayer. It's another piece of this that is so interwoven. It's not like there's one step and then you do the next. They're all a part of one another. You know, as we, as we abide in the vine, as we abide in Jesus Christ, as we come to know God deeper and deeper still, this lifelong journey that never really ends, we are transformed, right? We've talked about that, how we're transformed together as we conform no longer to the world, but God's image, right? And as we abide in the word of God and as we abide in prayer, that transforms us. Richard Foster actually says that prayer is the most transforming spiritual discipline, that it is through prayer that we're really transformed. So that hurts a little bit. Sometimes it's not super comfortable because God calls us into a different direction and surprises us. But I wonder today, in what ways, where do you find compassion? What is it that lays heavy on your heart? Today we can talk about anything in our community, in our family, in our own relationship with those closest to us, we can also talk about our nation. We can talk about our nation's leaders. We can talk about the world and the many catastrophes going on. But none of us can carry each and every one of the problems and concerns of the world. But God does. And God lays something on each of our hearts. Maybe it's 10 things. Maybe it's one thing. And it's that one thing or those 10 things that we seek God's will for and that we pray for fervently. So I want to ask you to consider what are the heavy things in your heart. And most of you probably already know, and most of you are probably already acting towards that, but maybe there's a way that God is calling you to pray that you haven't considered. So all these things that we're talking about are disciplines. They're things we have to make ourselves do over and over again because they're not things that are always natural that we desire. Sometimes we have to set aside time and say, all right, I'm going to do this for 30 minutes or for an hour. But Martin Luther knew that it was incredibly important to spend time in prayer, so much so that he spent three hours every single day in prayer. That's a lot of time. I don't know about you, and as you think about your schedules, if you could figure out where on earth you put three hours of prayer in, Non-stop, segregated time that nothing else can jump into. John Wesley knew that it was so important that he spent two hours of prayer every day. So they found something different for themselves, but both were an incredible amount of time. And I don't know about you, but this sermon series has challenged me in my own disciplines. 
I am hungry for the Lord, and I'm always wanting to grow, and I'm never feeling like I'm doing enough. But as I've been preparing these sermons tonight, as I've been drawing closer, I've realized the things that are incredibly important to me once again, and I've been growing in them. So I've set aside some time each Friday that I spend with a friend from college, and we FaceTime. Don't you love technology? So we FaceTime and we set it up somewhere and sit down and we sit together and we pray. Now we both recognize that we can sit and talk for an hour about life. But we have made it a point to talk for a few minutes and then sit and just pray until we're done. And usually one of us has to go at a certain time, but it's been from 30 minutes to an hour that we just sit and pray together. I'm the kind of person that likes to do things with other people, so that spurs me on. That takes me to the next level. And then I have a certain amount of time that I set aside each day. In my prayer life, I prefer to journal. I'm a talker, I'm a writer, I, do, I have to do something with those words. So I write them. And every time I journal, it's just a prayer. Dear Lord, dear Father, dear whatever it is, the name of God that I choose for that day. And I write my prayer. There are so many different ways that we can pray. But before I go into those, I want to talk about this abiding one more bit, because the scripture says, um, and I, I just think this whole piece has to go together. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish and it will be done for you. So it'd be really easy to stop there, right? Oh, cool, I can ask for whatever I want and God will do it. But if we read on, it says, My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. That you bear much fruit and become my disciples. Because as we're connected to God, we're transformed, and our will becomes God's will. And so anything that we want is really what God wants for us. So we begin praying in a way that is answered in new ways. Because God wants these exact same things. So we're just... Driving along with him, right? And what I love about this is, and what challenges me in this, is that so often someone will come to us for prayer. And if it's a physical need, we often say immediately, we just assume that God's will for that person is physical healing. But what if God is working on another area of their life also? What if there's something else to pray for? That's just an, a pretty easy example. Yes, we want physical healing, but God might be saying more. So sometimes we pray and say, if it is your will. You know, we kind of pray, but we tag on this, we're not really sure what your will is, God, so we're just going to say, if it's your will. But what if we took a little time before we started talking to God and we were listening a little more and said, God, what is your will in this particular instance? How do you want me to pray? And then what if we prayed with authority and said, like Jesus does, stand up, you're healed. Take your mat and go. Really just pray in the authority of Christ that that would be done because we believe that we're walking in God's authority. Pretty awesome stuff. So, okay, so there are... Um, all these ways that we can pray. We can journal, we can write our own psalm, we can pray through a psalm. But have you ever had those really dark, cloudy days and everything goes wrong and you just got to get it out somewhere? And so sometimes you start writing or you start spewing words, however it is that you process life. Maybe you bury them. But I would suggest getting them out somehow. Writing all the darkness down and saying, God, I'm angry about this. I don't know why you let this happen to so-and-so, or this group of people, or X, Y, or Z. And you just, you just pray openly. If we look at the Psalms, the psalmists aren't afraid to say they're upset, or they're hurting, or whatever's going on. But generally, by the end of the psalm, that psalmist comes around and says, Praise you, O God. Praise you. Blessed be your name. In some way, the psalmist recognizes as they're praying to God that a light is beyond, that God is bigger, that God is good, that God can carry all these things. So you can write a psalm. You can also have a conversation with God. 
um, or a conversation, if you read scripture and you see some of the conversa conversations Jesus had, read that and pray as though you're one of those people. Invite Jesus in and say, all right, God, I'm talking to you now. And say something, ask your question and listen. See what God says, write it down. Then respond, have a conversation with the Lord. Some awesome stuff. There's also this thing called imagination. And I know often we become adulted out of imagination, right? Like we know that kids can play and they can make up stories beyond the wildest imagination, but God's imagination is pretty big. And as we're listening to God, leading our prayers. Sometimes we can use this beautiful thing called imagination. And it, it's comparable to a sports analogy if you are about to make a play, right? So I'm a horseback rider, so I'm gonna use this because it's the easiest for me. But before I went into the show ring, you know, I was to imagine what my ride would be like, right? What exactly is supposed to happen? In an ideal world, how is my horse supposed to move? How am I supposed to sit? What are each transition? What's it going to be like? Now, invite Jesus into your life or into the situation you're praying about, that situation that's heavy on your heart that you have compassion for. And picture Jesus there. Perhaps there's a marriage you know about that's struggling and you know there's an obstacle. You may not know the exact obstacle, but if you do, actually physically see that obstacle removed and that couple reunited. See what Jesus will do. Ask for those types of things and then pray specifically in that way. If you know that someone's ill, imagine Jesus laying his hand on that person and see the sickness disappear. And pray in Jesus' name and see what happens. Use your holy imagination. There's also something called contemplative because I'm a talker and I'm a, this isn't my highest gift, is contemplative prayer, but many, many are blessed by it. And I've been trying to grow in this area because I think it's important. But really, it's sitting in silence, in silence. Recognizing God, honoring God, blessing God in that still, small space. In one of the books I was reading, it, it portrayed it in a way that I could understand much better than I've ever understood before. And this young father, this new father, talked about his baby and the infant and how he could just stare at the infant all day long and time would pass quicker than a week. Because he was just so amazed of the miracle of this baby. So pray. Pray in a contemplative way where you're just in awe. It doesn't require words. Just sitting in the presence of God, knowing that God is good. Let's see what happens. There are breath prayers. Sometimes, you know, we're going from one thing to the next and we need to pray real quick and we don't have all the words. But maybe there's a rhythm that you can get into that's a breath prayer. Pick a name of God that, that you just resonate with. Good Shepherd. Prince of Peace, Light of the World, okay? Here are a few. You know many more, I'm sure. And then ask Jesus what it is that you want the Lord to do for you. Prince of Peace, Heal, da, 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 right? Good Shepherd, walk with me. Holy Spirit, be my wisdom. Just a breath prayer. Just make up something and see how it goes and practice it. Try it for a while. If that doesn't work, try something else for a while. If that doesn't work, try something else for a while. Those are just some examples. Another one that I really like that I've used um, is when I was working at UK Healthcare as a chaplain. I did my chaplaincy internship, and then I did some just as-needed chaplain work. And sometimes I'd go from patient room to patient room, and the stories were just very heavy. right? And I just felt like I was carrying this heavy load. And because I'm physical in the sense that I like to do something with the struggles, I began, there was a, a hallway that was just that hallway, and very, very often there was nobody in it. So as I walked through that hallway from one space to another, 
Um, I would just lift the burdens that I felt like I was carrying and throw them off and give them to Jesus. Because God doesn't ask us to carry those burdens, right? God says, I will. Bring them to me. If you are weary and heavy laden, come. I will give you rest. So offer them to the Lord. Lay them on the altar. Don't carry them all your own. Do something with it. Throw it off. So these are just some different practices of prayer that you can, you can use and hopefully develop as you wish. Um, you can also pray through the scriptures. Literally, just read scripture and pray for that. See what happens. So now I want to invite you to do an experiment with me. And um, as you're able and as you wish, I would like to ask you just to sit up tall and put both feet on the floor, flat on the floor. Put your hands down on your lap, palm side down, and just take a deep breath. And offer to the Lord whatever it is. You can close your eyes, whatever works for you as you're connecting with God. And offer to God any distractions and anything that is getting in your way with connecting with God. And then as you are ready, flip your palms over and receive from God, palm side up, what the Lord has to speak to you about today. So go ahead and take a few minutes, and then I'll close us in prayer. So good shepherd, we thank you for caring for each of the needs in this space, each of the areas of compassion that you have laid on our hearts. Lord, we offer them back to you. God, we just desire that you will continue to lead and guide our prayers. Continue to strengthen us and help us to grow in this discipline of prayer that we would transform and be conformed even more to your likeness, Almighty God. So that we would abide in you and that you would transform us so that our desires are yours, so that you would be glorified and we would bear fruit. Lord, that is our heart's cry. God, would you care for each of the needs represented here would you offer peace and comfort, strength and hope? And now, Lord, we pray in the way that you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Thank you for taking part in that with me. I pray that God blesses you through that. And now, so may God draw you closer and closer to him in this sweet, sweet fellowship. May he draw you closer in your prayer life. 
And would you go in peace in the name of God the Father Almighty, His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Amen.